everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review London Has Fallen. So, London Has Fallen is a sequel to the 2013 film Olympus Has Fallen, and London Has Fallen this time around is directed by a director named Babak Najafi. Hopefully, I pronounced the gentleman's name right. And the film does star Gerard Butler, Aaron Eckhart, and Morgan Freeman. So, London Has Fallen is about when Mike and the president, everyone else, goes to the prime minister's funeral up in London. But then, while they're in London, Mike discovers that there's a plot to assassinate every world leader that attends. So of course it's up to Mike to protect the president from all of the chaos that is happening in London. So going into London Has Fallen, yeah, I was not looking forward to this movie. One, because I didn't care for Olympus Has Fallen. Yep, I said it. I really did not care for this movie. I know a lot of people do. That's awesome. Two thumbs up to anyone that finds a lot of enjoyment in Olympus Has Fallen. It's just that the movie itself was, eh, it was okay. You know, I really liked the first half of Olympus Has Fallen, but then once it got to the second half, it just got very boring, very stupid, and it just wasn't a very good movie from there. I just went to this one open-minded, hoping to have some fun, and coming out of London Has Fallen, it's honestly about the same as the original. I really just didn't care for it. However, my positives with London Has Fallen is that Gerard Butler, Aaron Eckhart, and Morgan Freeman, they're all very good in this film. I really enjoy seeing them in London Has Fallen. You could tell especially Gerard Butler and Aaron Eckhart are the ones having a lot of fun in this film, and I thought for what they're given in this film, they all do a very good job. There are actually some very funny moments between Gerard Butler and Aaron Eckhart throughout this film that I actually really enjoyed. Like, the scenes with Gerard Butler and Aaron Eckhart is where I feel like the movie is actually having fun with itself. These two are pretty much what makes some moments of this movie just very fun. The action sequences I thought were handled very well for the most part. They were edited very well. They were very fun to watch. Cinematography is serviceable. It doesn't look great in the daytime. However, for some reason, when it gets to the nighttime, the cinematography actually looks pretty good. Like, I actually like the cinematography a lot better when the movie gets to the nighttime. But I think in daytime, you know, it's serviceable, it's decent, but I think lighting could have been a lot better there. I like the direction by Babak Najafi. He did a very good job directing this film because Antoine Fuqua did direct Olympus Has Fallen. You have a new director in this sequel, and I thought for what Babak had in this film, he actually did a very solid job directing it. The rest of the performances are pretty good in this film. I think performances wise, everyone actually does do their part well. And the last positive London Has Fallen has going for it is the finale, as I did think the finale was very fun and intense. And you know, it was just really cool to watch. Just like any other action set piece, it's just honestly a lot of fun to watch. But of course, there are the problems. And one of my problems is actually the same problem I had with Olympus Has Fallen, and it's that this film takes itself way too damn seriously. They just don't know whether they want to be fun or just take itself seriously. And for the most part, these films seem like they want to be taken seriously, even though there's times where it's just so laughable because of how serious this film is trying to be. The storyline is bland. It's not interesting. I really didn't care for the storyline. It's not bad, but I just didn't care for it. And anytime an action scene's not going on, I'm just finding myself, honestly, just very disinterested in this film because the storyline really isn't all that great and that's probably why it's hard to have more fun with these films because you don't want to just go in for the action but I like to have a good storyline the storyline doesn't have to be groundbreaking or anything but give me at least a good storyline where I could be invested in that instead of just one thing the action and the comedic interaction between Jared Butler and Aaron Eckhart are really the only things that keep me interested that keep me engaged throughout this movie 
take out those scenes, I'm not interested in this film at all. And that's why the beginning even feels a little bit boring because it actually does take a while just for you to get your first action set piece. The beginning is just like set up which I didn't think was interesting because at least with Olympus Has Fallen, like I said, I had a lot of fun with the first half of Olympus Has Fallen. So like how the first half of that movie set up the storyline, the world, it was actually handled very well and that's what had me invested at least with the first half of that film. And this film, however, how it sets up its storyline honestly was not that impressive to me. And like I said, for the action set pieces, I really had a lot of fun with them, but there are some times where the editing in those action set pieces could have been better. They were very distracting because they did have too many cuts and certain points. Angela Bassett in London Has Fallen, very wasted in this film. She's not in this film a whole lot and honestly they didn't really give her a lot to do. So it's a shame because Angela Bassett's a really talented actress. And then just like with Olympus Has Fallen, the movie has some seriously stupid moments but it doesn't even embrace its stupid moments. The movie's just so busy being taken seriously. It's not just so stupid it's funny, it's just so stupid that it's honestly really stupid. You know where the storyline's gonna go from beginning to end, and I always say this, I don't care if a movie's predictable, I don't care if it's cliche, as long as you have me invested in the storyline. But since I was not invested in the overall storyline with London Has Fallen, I can't help but point out all of the predictability in this film. But the last problem London Has Fallen has is the visuals. Some of the visuals do not look good. In fact, it looks really bad. Like there's a scene where the London Bridge is trying to break down, it's collapsing and all that. The visuals in that London Bridge scene, oh my God, I couldn't believe how noticeably bad the visuals looked. Oh and then of course, you saw in the trailer that scene where the helicopter crashes in the building and then falls down to the ground. Oh my God, that looks so bad. Bad. Overall, you guys, London Has Fallen, just like with Olympus Has Fallen, I honestly didn't care for it. I think if you did enjoy Olympus, you might either have a lot of fun with London or have some fun with London. It's very forgettable. I'm honestly going to probably forget about this movie after I'm done editing this entire review and uploading it. And I'm going to give London Has Fallen two out of four stars. So you guys in the comments down below, let me know what you think of London Has Fallen and Olympus Has Fallen. And I also want to mention that I was in Avi Sex's award show called the Mediocrity Award Show. I got to be a presenter in his award show and you have many other awesome people presenting at his award show. And I want to thank Avi so much for having me be on his award show to present. So if you guys want to check out his award show, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!